Grew up in a broken home. Very little contact with parents today. What do I answer when she asks? Well, the other thing you got to remember, and this is covered in the book, and because women have been propagandized with the same propaganda that we have. And so all in the West, the archetype, whether it's TV commercials, TV shows, movies, is, you know, men are useless, stupid, effeminate, girly idiots. And women are very masculine, very stoic, and very calm and very rational. And so when you see that shit over and over and over again, without realizing it is teaching you a dysfunctional way to show up in the world. So in other words, he's like, how do I phrase this to the girl he's on a date with? And so the important thing to understand is that women are like, oh, talk about your feelings. Tell me about your problems. And that sounds cute and romantic and it's cute in movies and everything. But when you do that in real life, you're, and this is a great test for this. You, you can use women's bodies. So get, get some women that you know, maybe some pretty girls from work or some of your female friends or just you know some of the women in your life. It could be your sisters, your mom, or whatever. And just sit down and have a conversation and talk about something that you were very masculine, very confident, very alpha, and something that you did. And when something very manly and very attractive that you're explaining to women, what you'll notice is they'll be playing with their hair. The, and they don't, you guys just do it. It's, it's a totally innate type of thing that happens. It's biological that happens. And so when you hear a man talk on, about things that are very masculine, very attractive in a man, you start preening. You just can't help it. You just do it naturally. You don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. Trying to be visually attractive because you guys are designed to get our attention visually. And so when that starts happening, obviously you see attraction. And so the flip side is to then tell all the women that are sitting around about something that you were total beta, something maybe you did, you got rejected, you did something really stupid with the girl. And it's like the moment you express the idea or what you did where you like, you look like a bitch, you will notice like in unison, the women will just go, Bloop. their knees will all switch they'll they're tur they'll turn away from you or they may have been facing you and they don't know they're doing it it just <laughs> happens instinctually so if you talk about something that you did that was very attractive as a man and manly they get turned on and they start showing signs of attraction especially these are women that are attracted to it could be your girlfriend or somebody you're dating or whatever or just pretty women in general if you're talking about something attractive and you'll see positive response if you talk about something negative, you'll see they instantly get turned off. Their body language changes, and they stop playing with their hair. They, you know, their arms may get crossed in front of you. They might start looking away and not kind of paying attention. It's amazing to watch. <laughs> and so my point being with this is because this is a tell for everything. It cuts across all the bullshit, all the red pill fucking nonsense, any of the propaganda. This is innate. This is biology. And you can't, this is something that the creator has designed us to be this way. And so you can't fight biology. And so, uh, again, explain something that is really attractive you did, and then something that you just absolutely look like a bitch. Mm -hmm. And when you explain something where you look like a bitch, the women in unison, all of them will instantly stop displaying any signs of attraction. And then their, their legs will cross the other way and point away from you. They'll, they'll face away from you. And so the point being is that whatever, because, you know, again, you guys are like, oh, talk about your feelings. If it's not attractive, it doesn't make you look masculine. If it's not going to paint, make you look more confident, more attractive, more sure of yourself, more manly, more masculine, keep it to yourself. Or at the very least, put a positive spin on it. And so in this case, he came from a broken home and doesn't have a um, good relationship with his family. He could say, you know, I'm, I'm not real close to my parents. I kind of came from a broken home. And, uh, but, you know, what I learned from that environment was that, you know, I didn't want to be like my parents. I didn't want to be like my family. And so I did a lot of self-help. Maybe I went through therapy or I read a lot of books. I really developed myself because I made the decision I didn't want to be like my family. Mm -hmm. and here I am. And I, I've dated these amazing women throughout my life. I've had a lot of really great girlfriends, 
and I've been blessed. And the good news is you get the benefit hmm. of the latest awesome version <laughs> of me. Yeah. And so you put a positive spin on it. Yeah, I went through a lot of shit in my life, and I came from a bad, difficult thing, but I'm not attached to it. I don't have a wound with it anymore. I'm not a bitch anymore. This thing happened. It, yeah, it's sad, but hey, look at this solution. Look at I became this, or I, what I, I experienced so much pain in childhood, I became an entrepreneur and became very successful. That's one of the things that entrepreneurs, the most successful entrepreneurs typically came from a difficult upbringing or difficult background. And so it's like the, we're all like driven by fear mm -hmm. and fear to succeed. And you know, that's part of masculine energy. That's something that's very obviously attractive. Mm -hmm. to women and so whatever you're going to say and again this is right out of the book it's got to have a positive spin on it. it's got to make you look good you can go through a difficult time in your past and some crazy shit but just remember anything that makes you look like a bitch it's going to cause her and any other women in your general vicinity to become unattracted in other words to feel turned off or repulsed yeah. so just remember that if, especially if you're on a first date and you know because the more the higher a woman's interest in you, like say on a scale of one to ten, a woman like she just really digs you, and you're a seven or an eight in her eyes on a scale of one to ten, attract attractive wise. And so if she's that high, you can screw up a bunch before she's like, eh, this guy's a bitch. But if her attraction to you is like to the point where she's like, eh, he's kind of cute, eh, I'll give him a chance. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I like him. Maybe I don't. It's worth a you know worth a shot. So her attraction is maybe a five, maybe a six. So you're like barely holding on to your fingernails. Because if it's below like a five, it's like she's not interested. It doesn't matter right. who you are, how much money, how good looking you are. She's not feeling it. And mm -hmm. you got no shot. And so in this case, it's like if her interest is low to begin with, and then you say something that makes you look bad or unattractive, that might be all it takes for her to be like, eh, no, not it. And then you're out. And so... If you're trying to apply what's in the book, the idea is you're trying to clean up your game. You're trying to show the best version of you up front and only the most attractive version of you. And then months later, when your girl's head over heels in love with you, she can learn about all, all the crazy shit that actually went on. But you got to remember, every time you tell her something that makes you look like a bitch or something you did bad or that made you look weak, mm -hmm. it also gives her ammunition because maybe you do something in the future that makes her feel a certain way. And then what she'll do is she'll throw that crap in your face. Yeah. And so it's important. You know, it's it's like dealing with the IRS or dealing with the law. It's, you know, an attorney's going to say, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Keep your, you know, in other words, if it's not going to make you look more attractive, more confident, more masculine, keep to yourself and shut the fuck up. And if you are going to discuss those things, it has to be, it's kind of like the wound and then heal technique from public speaking where you're like, Oh, it was water skiing, and uh, the, the rope got wrapped around my arm, and it ripped my arm off, and it was just torn to shreds, and they couldn't sew it back on. I had a guy that that was his experience. He was a kid water skiing, and it you know it got wrapped around his arm, and it just ripped his arm off and just shredded all the meat, and they just couldn't put it back together. Wow. So he was a one-arm computer guy. He was a really nice dude. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I, I got one arm, but, hey, it's been the best thing ever. I'm like a computer genius. I love computers. I got one hand, and you know what? I've... I have a lot of muscle control with this one particular hand and these fingers. I can do lots of magical things <laughs> with my hand and my fingers because I only had one arm. And so the ladies really appreciate my skills because they only got one arm, but this one is the magic arm. And so in other words, the wound is like, oh, my arm got ripped off, but the heel is, hey, this, <laughs> it's going to show you a lot of pleasure. Oh, gosh. You get the benefit of that. <laughs> wound, then heal. The best public experience public speakers that's how they start out they get out and they go i used to be really fucked up and all these bad things happened to me but i came out on the other side and all these good things happened as a result of that and that's what people will cheer for including women that you date 